Greetings artists, my name is Daniel Callen and I'm an artist and the art teacher at Lichten Springs K-8 and I'm missing all of my amazing student artists and their awesome work so I'm super excited to share my love of visual arts with you today. As you can probably guess, I'm here in my home and I know people have been spending a lot more time around their houses than they normally do and it makes me wonder about other people's homes which is exactly what this book, Home, is about. Let's check it out. Home by Carson Ellis Home is a house in the country. Or home is an apartment. Some homes are boats. And some homes are wigwams. Some homes are palaces or underground lairs, or shoes. French people live in French homes. Atlanteans make their homes underwater. Some folks live on the road. Clean homes, messy homes, tall homes, short homes, sea homes, Bee homes, hollow tree homes. But whose home is this? And what about this? Who in the world lives here and why? This is the home of a Slovakian duchess. This is the home of a Kenyan blacksmith. This is the home of a Japanese businessman. This is the home of a Norse god. A babushka lives here. A moonian lives here. A raccoon lives here. An artist lives here. This is my home, and this is me. Where is your home? Where are you? So today we're going to learn about the different ways that artists have chosen to show their homes and places that are special to them. Then we're going to think about the details and the things that make our own homes unique and create a three-dimensional, 3D artwork inspired by Vincent Van Gogh's painting, Van Gogh's Chair. Are you ready artists? Let's get started. How do artists show home? This one is simple and stylized. Or this one has lots of detail and feels so alive. This one's serene and calm. Bright and colorful. The texture in this one feels soft and velvety. This one has so much drama. Look at all the details. It could be a whole room, or it could be really simple and just a chair or piece of furniture. This is a 3D model of a fancy house. Here's another sculpture of an artist's studio. It could be outside and bright and full of cheer, or it could be inside your bedroom and full of movement but they always have texture and detail. Details. Uh, we're gonna use a variety of materials today. I'm gonna show you a whole bunch of options and then I'll show you what I'm gonna use and then I'll show you how to make a project. So let's check out what kind of stuff maybe you might wanna use on this project. Papers like construction paper, printer paper, cardstock, or even an old paper bag. Drawing tools, pencils, pens, markers, black crayons, anything you can draw with. Coloring media like markers, paint, crayons, oil pastels are great. And collage materials, magazines, wrapping paper, old coloring sheets. And some other tools. We need sticky stuff like glue, tape, some scissors, and paste. Wait, what is paste? So if you don't have any tape or any glue sticks or glue at home, it's really, really easy to make your own paste. And all you need is flour, salt, 
and water. And paste is an awesome sticky glue that you can use on any paper products, cardboard magazines, anything that's made out of paper. I'm gonna start by putting a big old scoop of flour in my container. Then I'm gonna sprinkle in some salt. You want quite a bit of salt. It's gonna keep it from getting stinky. And I'm gonna pour in some water. Uh, I wanna put in just a little bit of water at a time because it's hard to take water away, but you can always add a little more. Now I'm mixing it and I want it to be sticky, but I also need to be able to spread it and pour it. So I'm looking for a consistency where it sticks to my spoon, because that shows me that it's sticky, uh, but I can al it also kind of pour off of my spoon when I pick it up. And I'm still a little bit too thick here, so I'm gonna add a little bit more water. So you can always add more water, but I can't take it away if it gets too thin. And I'm gonna mix, mix, mix it. The more you stir it, the better. It helps to make the paste stickier. And that's looking about perfect. So you know it's ready when it will stick to your spoon, but it will also glop off in kind of big gloppy chunks like that. And that lets me know I can spread it and that it's sticky and it'll really hold together. I put my uh, paste in an airtight resealable container so that I can use it for a long time because a little paste goes a long way. So I'm gonna be using some paper I cut out from a paper bag and I like this because it's pretty stiff and I always have paper bags around. I'm gonna be using a pencil. It has my favorite art tool and eraser and a Sharpie because I love those big bold lines. That's my personal choice. I need something to color with. So I'm gonna use some pastels. That'll give me that great Van Gogh look but you could use any of those other options would be great. Uh, I also need some scissors and I'm gonna use some collage. So I cut out a picture from a magazine and I just need something sticky like some paste. Perfect. So first we need to make our flat 2D. It just has width and height. So our flat 2D piece of paper into a three dimensional form. Our paper's 2D because it only has length and height. So uh, we need to give it a third dimension, which is depth. To do that, we're going to start by folding our paper in half. And you can see I'm just using a old paper bag. It works great, it's nice and stiff. And I'm folding it in half. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a square. So I'm going to use this bottom edge as one side of my square. And I'm just gonna try to make it in the middle and draw it up each side so that all the sides are about the same length. If you wanna use a ruler to practice, a two inch square is just about perfect for this project if you're using a piece of printer paper. Uh, so I have my square here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my scissors and I'm going to cut up each side. I'm not gonna cut the top, I'm just gonna cut the right side and the left side all the way to the, to the top of my square, not to the top of the paper. So I just snip, 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 right up there. And this is gonna help us to create our three-dimensional form. You'll see it in just a second here. Now remember, our uh, inspiration piece is Van Gogh's chair. So what I'm gonna do is open up my paper, and then I'm gonna pull this in towards the middle, and I'm going to refold it over. And I wanna crease right here, and really push it down with my fingernail. So to show you that again, I had it open. Here's where I cut it, flipped it over, open it up, pull up on the middle, fold it over, and give it a crease. So now you can see that I've created something that has height, it has width, and it has depth. It goes in three dimensions, which makes it a 3D shape. Now that I've prepared my 3D shape, it's time that I get drawing because we're talking about making a whole room. I'm gonna use that middle fold line and I'm gonna just draw a nice dark line down the middle. Now, which side of this do you think is gonna become the wall? That's right. The top is gonna to become the wall, which means that the bottom here is gonna become our floor. Now, 
This features something very cool. It features a chair and you can make any kind of chair you want. Maybe you have a favorite cozy chair you like to read in at home that you'd like to recreate. Maybe you wanna make an awesome throne for your awesome sibling or yourself. Uh, or maybe you're inspired like me by Van Gogh's simple chair and I'm just gonna draw Van Gogh's simple chair. So to do that, I'm gonna start with the seat and I'm outlining this square in the middle as the seat. And Van Gogh's chair had a woven texture in the middle. So I'm going to try to imitate that by drawing an X. And I'm going to use some vertical lines going up and down in the top and the bottom section. Some nice vertical lines giving it some great texture, making it look like it's something you can feel. And then I'm going to use horizontal lines on the left and the right sections. And this helps it to look like it's a woven straw top chair. It gives it that awesome texture and that look of weaving. So I have my seat. Now a chair also needs legs, so I'm gonna draw the legs. This is a, if you are using a pencil, pencils are amazing, and this is gonna be much easier to plan with a pencil and a race. And I'm just doing it right now with a Sharpie. So I go back up. I want these to not be just spindly little stick legs. And I'm basically just making a letter H. And that's gonna turn into the legs of my chair. Now a uh, chair also needs a back. Right now it's just a stool. It's not called Van Gogh's stool, it's called Van Gogh's chair. However, if you have a stool you love, you absolutely can make an awesome stool and just leave off the back, but I'm gonna put a back on my chair. So I'm gonna make another letter H going straight up and it's a little taller in the back. And then I'm gonna come back down just a little bit, come across and I might give it a couple of these little sections to rest your back on. I think it'll be more comfortable that way. And so there we go. Here's my chair. And now this, wall's, this uh, room's looking very empty. I don't wanna be in a room that just has one chair sitting against a wall. We need some more stuff here, right? We need some more stuff. So I think over here on this part of the wall, I might hang a picture. I'm gonna draw a picture just like that. And I'm gonna just use some wiggly lines here to make a picture frame. I like when sometimes I let my things go off the edge of the page because it makes the viewer think, what could be over here? The room keeps going, I wonder what's there. So I have a picture on this side and I have some options to fill it in. I could draw to fill in my picture or I could collage something to fill it in. So I'm gonna wait a minute and just think about what I wanna do here. Now on this side, I think I'm gonna do a window. So I'm just gonna draw a nice big rectangle. And this window actually keeps going over here. It's a really big window. To give it some depth, what I can do is draw a diagonal line and then two parallel lines. And that helps it, looks like it look like it's going back a little bit. And again, I can draw something out here or I could collage something and I'm gonna think about what I wanna do there. I have more to do, so I have time to think. Now I'm gonna do my floor. I love, love, love the tile floor uh, in Van Gogh's piece. So I'm going to try to copy that uh, a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw diagonal lines. But I'm going for a tile look, so now I need to draw some lines going the other way. And I'm going to draw diagonal lines going the other way. So I have this awesome picture that I cut out of a magazine that I think I'd like to collage. So it looks like out this window is a beautiful mountain range. So I'm just going to, uh, I could glue it and then cut it, or I could cut it then glue it. I think the best way for me is I'm gonna cut, do kind of a combo because I wanna have a little bit of all of this going on here. So I have my picture here. I'm going to glue it right inside of my window using my paste that I made, hooray for paste. And you could use a brush. My favorite thing is make sure when you're putting glue on, you take it off of your artwork. 
I just like to use my finger. That's a great art tool and paste feels cool. It's slimy and sticky and kind of yucky. I like putting my fingers in that. All right, now I'm gonna glue it on. And it's just like using glue at school. You count to 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I am going to use some pastels. These are chalk pastels. That's what I have at home. So that's what I'm going to use. And they're a little bit smudgy and messy, but man, do they make a pretty picture. So uh, I'm going to now color in my whole entire picture until I feel really proud and I feel like it's done. Now that it's all colored, I can just fold it, pop the middle back out. Oh my gosh, look at my hair. Pop the middle back out and you take a look. I have an awesome 3D chair and it looks like the floor goes right underneath. Very cool. Now it's your turn. What kind of room will you make? As artists, we take inspiration from things that we see, but then we add our own ideas to make it our own. So I hope I've inspired you. Uh, to make something awesome that you can be proud of. And remember, this video and lots of other videos are available on the SPS YouTube site, so you can always rewatch this later. Thanks for making art to me today. Bye.